Hey everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to be going through a few of the Steam input things that you can do in order to make your gameplay experience a little more personal and a little more uh, user-friendly for you. Because a lot of times we sit down and we pick up controllers and we're, we wonder what were the developers thinking when they decided to set this control this way? Well, with Steam input, you can actually do almost whatever you want with a game and completely bend it to your well to make it more comfortable and usable for you. If that sounds good, let's get started. Let's start off with one of my favorite games on Steam and that is Chroma Gun. In Chroma Gun, you have this cool gun that allows you to shoot different colors and in order to get between those different colors, the developers set it up so you could use the right button, which is totally fine. However, there's other options now that we have these trackpads. In the past, I've always set up trackpads when I'm using, say, my Steam controller. Uh, this one would always be um, camera control. And this is set up for camera control, and it works really good. But because we have a right stick here, I really don't feel like I need to have camera control there. So that frees up the right pad to do other things. Generally, um, devs will use the left trackpad as the D-pad, but because the Steam deck has a D-pad, that frees up the uh, left trackpad to do other things. So what other things can we do? Well, let me show you. First off, uh, you, if you hit the Steam button and you push to the right on the D-pad, it brings up the control layout, and I'm gonna hit control controller settings. I guess I gotta not touch it, touch it and use the A button instead. And uh, you can see that I'm using the official layout for Chroma Gun. However, I can edit this all that I want. So I'm gonna come down here and go edit layout. And on the left hand side, you can see all of your different options. I'm gonna head all the way down to trackpads. And the right trackpad is still set up as a mouse, so it's camera control, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. The left trackpad is direction pad. And what I'm gonna do, instead of using a direction pad, I'm gonna go down here, all the way down until I get to a radial menu. Uh, and then once I'm in radial menu, I can add radial menu one, two, and three. I can add, uh, like I think it's like 20 options here. I'm obviously not gonna do that many, but what I'm gonna do is add one, two, and three. Now, the first one, I'm gonna set as zero. And the reason I'm setting it as zero is just so you can see what it actually does. The second one, I'm gonna set as one. The third one, I'm going to set as two. And you're probably thinking, why is he setting three as two and two as three? Like, you're, it's all gonna make sense in just a second. All right, so I've got zero, one, two, and three. Now if I back, back out to the game, if I put my finger on the touchpad on the left, it brings up a radial menu. And what you'll notice is that zero is in the middle. And one is up here, two, and three. Now zero doesn't actually do anything, so there's no reason for me to do it. And I'm getting a little bit of haptic feedback when I touch that. It's like saying, hey, there's nothing there. Why the first one isn't on the outside, why the first one that you pick is always in the middle, I don't know yet. I haven't really had a chance to figure that out. Uh, and if you know, leave a comment down below and I'll make another video that explains that. Uh, but on the outside, we have one, two, and three. And if I go one, it selects the blue. If I go to two, it selects the yellow. And if I go to three, it selects the red. Seems great. However, that, that requires me to tap and push down, which isn't a big deal. I get a little bit of haptic feedback when I do it, but I do think that there's a better way. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to the Steam button. I'm gonna go to controller settings. I'm gonna go over to edit layout. We'll go back down to trackpads. And on the left trackpad, I'm gonna go into my settings for my radial menu. Now right now, radial menu button type is set to click, which means I have to actually depress the trackpad in order for it to do its thing. So I'm gonna change that from click to touch release. What does that mean? Well, it means that I can touch it, I don't have to depress it, and as soon as I take my finger off of it, that's when it's actually going to fire that input, and it won't fire that input until I release the touch input. Why is this important? It's important because as soon as you put your finger down on the trackpad, it's going to be waiting for you to release. And that makes sure, it brings this up on screen and it makes sure that you can look down 
and, and know that you've got the right thing selected before you let go. There's other options. You can set it up to release after you click it and release, uh, or you can set it to just continually fire that same button. And I'll show you why you would want to do that. Uh, uh, actually, I'll show you why you would want to do that later, but I actually don't use that. I think that there's better options. Okay. Now, I, I could just go back and, and do that, but what I'm going to do now real quick is I'm going to go into haptics, and I'm just going to turn the ha haptics up just a little bit. And we back out to the game. And now what happens is it doesn't do anything until I take my finger off of the button. So you can see, if you watch right here, you can see that I currently have, whoops, I currently have yellow selected, right? So basically, I can just tap the different areas here and switch to the different colors. Really, really handy. However, I think that there's actually another way that you can do this. So I'm gonna hit Steam. I'm gonna go into my con controller settings. I don't know why I can't just tap that. It's probably because I can't, I'm not looking directly down at it. I'm gonna go to layout. We're gonna go to trackpads. Under trackpads, I'm gonna come back down here. Instead of radial menu, I'm going to go down to a directional swipe. Okay, now why do I think a directional swipe is better? Here's why. In this particular game, you already have a UI element that's on the screen that shows you the, the thing that you're trying to match. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, well, let's see, the right button, the, the right bumper on this cycles through them. So I'm going to say up. If I add a command, I'll set that as the left bumper. And then down, I'm going to add a command as right bumper. And if I go back out, whoops, I didn't mean to close the game. There we go. Now what happens is if I swipe up, it goes up through the pages. If I swipe down, it goes down through the pages. And so now you don't even have that extra UI element coming up on the screen. You can just say, oh, I'm gonna swipe through and change what color that I'm using, which is really, really handy, I think. Uh, so. That's one of the things that you can do with Chroma Gun. Let's move on to some retro games. Right, so now you can see that I've got Sonic the Hedgehog running on RetroArch on my Steam Deck. By the way, if you want me to show you how to get your ROMs imported onto the Steam Deck, leave a comment in the section down below and maybe I'll make a video about it. Uh, but that's not what this is about. This is about how can we utilize the touchpads in order to make our gaming experience better. The cool thing about, or the, the thing about RetroArch that a lot of people will run into is that it expects you, because it's a PC game, to have a keyboard attached. And there's no keyboard attached. I mean, sure, I could attach a keyboard. I could bring up the keyboard from the quick access menu, but there's a better way to do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Steam and I'm gonna open up my controller settings. And once I've got those open, you can see I'm using the official layout for RetroArch, but I'm going to edit it just a little bit. And so I'll hit the edit menu and I'm going to come down to trackpads. And I'm going to ignore the right trackpad because I have a plan for that uh, later on. But my left trackpad, I'm going to set up as a radial menu. And you don't have to set it as a radial menu. You have a million different options. But I'm going to do a radial menu. And I'm just going to do one button on the radial menu. I can always add more later if I think of other things. But right now, I just want to set it as the F1 button. The F1 button is basically bring up the RetroArch menu so you can load a different ROM or do a save state. And you could do all of that stuff through hotkeys on your trackpads. I don't wanna do that by accident, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I do wanna always have quick access to that menu so I can quickly do something, all right? So now that I've got that set up, I'm gonna set my radial menu to be a uh, touch release. So I'm going to tap the, screen, the the trackpad, take my thumb off of it, and it's going to work at that point. I'm going to back out of this, but go back into the game. And uh, actually, I'll leave it paused. And now if I want to bring up my menu, I just touch and release. Oh, hold on. I realized my mistake here. I put it on that middle thing, which I can't figure out what that middle thing is for. So trackpads. And... We're going to remove that. 
Where's remove command? And I'm gonna set it as radial button two, keyboard F1. And there we go. Now all I do is I, ta I tap and it takes me in and out of the menu. Super, super easy in order to get back to the menu. All right, the next thing that I wanna show you is how to utilize the toggle feature as part of the track pads in order to use rewind in RetroArch. It's a really cool thing. So first off, I have to turn on rewind in RetroArch. You go to your main menu, then under quick menu, you're gonna come down here until you get to uh, rewind. You're gonna turn that feature on. Uh, I did turn it on earlier and why it didn't save that, I'm not sure. It might be because I quit without saving, but that's okay. Uh, so now I've got that done, but it's not enabled on here because the default key is the R key and I, I don't have a keyboard attached to my Steam Deck and 99% of the time I'm not going to have a keyboard attached to my Steam Deck. So I'm gonna go into my controller settings and I'm gonna edit the layout. I'm gonna go down to track pads and on my right track pad, I'm gonna set it from a joystick to instead be a uh, radial menu. And um, I'm gonna set this up as the R key. You can see that I actually tried this earlier, but that was actually a part of a right stick click or a right pad click, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna remove that command. And I'm gonna come down to uh, r one of my radial buttons. I'm gonna set it to the keyboard of R. Now, I gotta go, for some reason it jumps down to my left trackpad, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go all the way back up to my right trackpad. And why am I using a radial menu here? Well, because I could put other commands on here as well. Now, the issue with this is it's a touchpad, right? And so when I touch the touchpad, it's going to send that signal, but then it's gonna stop real quick. And the way that Rewind works in RetroArch is it's expecting you to hold down the Rewind button, R, on your keyboard until you don't wanna rewind anymore and then take your finger off of it. So how do you do that? Well. You're gonna to go to this little gear, and then under settings, scroll down, and you're going to set it to a toggle. So you're gonna click on that little button to have it be a toggle instead of uh, whatever else it is. All right, now I'm going to go to the uh, menu button three, and I'm gonna set that to be the I key. Why am I using the I key? Here's the reason, oh, I gotta push back up. The reason why I want to do the I key is for fast forwarding. So let's say you're playing, I don't know, a, a, an old JRPG and there's tons and tons of talky, talky, talk, and, and they didn't give you a way to make the text go faster. Well, you could use the fast forward button in order to get past that chatting faster. Or let's say you're playing a JRPG and you're waiting for a month, like you're trying to grind to get more powerful before you go up against the end boss. Well, you turn on fast forward and maybe those fights happen a lot faster, that kind of thing. I'm not gonna use that in Sonic the Hedgehog, but I figured I'd set it up now anyway. Uh, and I'm gonna set this as, you guessed it, a toggle, so I can hit the button and turn it off. Okay, so now that I've got that set up, I'm gonna back out and just let me go into my quick menu real quick and see if I have to turn anything else on. Um, all right, I think we're good. So. Um, let me close this. I'm gonna play a little bit of Sonic the Hedgehog. Grab some rings. Run, bumped into that guy, oh no. I got the rings back. I just missed a bunch of rings. I just missed that little TV back there. But that's okay. I'm not doing too bad. And you can see everything's working just fine as I go loop-de-loop, -loop, but I decide that I wanna go back after this. Maybe I, I came all the way down here and I I ran into something and it, it cost me all those rings. Well, that's okay. I'm just gonna hit rewind. And now it's rewinding. And it's gonna go backwards. And then I'm gonna go right back into playing and we've rewound and everything's fine. So that's how you could use the track pads uh, to get to menu items that you otherwise wouldn't have because you don't have a keyboard attached to your Steam Deck. All right, let's move into Final Fantasy VII and let me show, or not seven, Final Fantasy XIV, and I'll show you how you can set it up 
so that you can use the joystick as your camera controls or the um, touchpad as the camera controls. It's up to you. Okay, so here I've got Final Fantasy uh, 14 loaded up, one of my favorite MMOs of all time. And one of the things that somebody had asked is, can you control the, the camera with the joystick and with the uh, trackpad? And you can, the problem is, is that it's really slow on the trackpad because it's acting like a joystick. And some games will allow the joystick to work just fine as the trackpad and other games won't. And Final Fantasy 14 happens to be one of those games. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to come in here and use the Steam button. And I'm gonna open up my settings. I'm gonna go over to Edit Layout. I'm gonna come all the way down to trackpads and my right trackpad is set as a joystick. Well, I'm gonna set it to move as a mouse instead. And then I back out but now it's moving the mouse around and not actually controlling the camera. So what do you do? Well, you're gonna add a second command to that, that layout under the trackpads. I'm gonna come down here and it's not gonna be click, it's gonna be under touch. And under touch, I'm going to set it to be a mouse right click. So basically what's happening is you are holding down the right click button on your mouse and dragging it around when you touch the trackpad. Now it is much, much more responsive and much easier to use. On top of that, you can also set the, the actual click to be something if you want. But right now, that's really, really responsive. So if I'm playing and I wanna spin my, my, uh, my camera around real fast, I can do that. Or I can just use the joystick. Now the joystick actually, because this is such a slow paced game with your joystick, it actually works pretty well, but if you want to use that right, the um, the right uh, trackpad in order to be your camera control, you absolutely can. Now, something that somebody else might ask is, can I also set it up so that gyro works? And you absolutely can. I go into Edit Layout. I'm going to come down to Gyro. Right now, it's set to None. I'm going to set it as uh, as Mouse, and sure enough, it works. All I have to do is move this around when my thumb is on the trackpad and everything's fine. And I take my thumb off the trackpad, it doesn't work anymore. But then if I wanna control the mouse itself, I can just do that with my thumb on the thumbstick. The options that you have when it comes to deciding how you wanna control your game are absolutely limitless. Now, there's a lot more that I could go into with controlling Steam input on the Steam Deck, and I absolutely will in the future. So make sure that you subscribe and do all of those things because I've got a lot more things to show you on here. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay awesome, everyone.